السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو دس آن لائن لیکچر سیریز آف ڈیٹا مائننگ ان دس لیکچر آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو انٹروڈیوز یو این ادر امپورٹنٹ اسپیکٹ آف ایسوسیشن رول مائننگ وچ از اسکوینشل پیٹرن مائننگ ان دس لیکچر آئی ول ٹرائی ٹو ڈسکس سم بیسک کانسیپٹ آف اسکوینشل پیٹرنس اینڈ also we will discuss some sequential pattern mining algorithms in which we will discuss uh, spade which is an interesting algorithm uh, for mining uh, sequential patterns which is sequential pattern mining in vertical data format another one is prefix span which is sequential pattern mining by pattern growth and close span which is mining closed sequential patterns so as in our previous lectures uh, previous lecture we have discussed uh, how to mine quantitative patterns and how to mine rare patterns and negative patterns so uh, now i am going to discuss the basic concepts of sequential patterns and sequential pattern mining so the first thing is we should see sequential pattern mining is very useful and has very broad applications one application could be in customer shopping sequences for example uh, you get a loyalty card from your shops like uh, actually loyalty card is a card that some shops give to their regular customers and when each time the customers buys something from the shop some electron uh, some points are electronically stored on their card and later on th uh, these points can be exchanged uh, for some goods or some services you may want to see maybe one customer likely going to first buy a laptop then a digital camera then smartphone within uh, six months so if this forms a pattern you may be able to try to do some kind of advertisement to other similar customers or you know uh, serving some new incentives for this customer similarly uh, medical treatment also forms sequences natural disasters like earthquakes happening earthquake happening it may have some sequences of natural and also human phenomena similarly science and engineering a lot of things are processed they evolve along with time they also forms some kind of sequences similarly stocks and markets they have some kind of duration or some kind of uh, sequences so uh, they also form some kind of you know sequences similarly web click streams uh, calling patterns for telephone and other things also forms sequences even for software engineering domain the programming uh, programming executions forms sequential patterns the biological sequences is very very useful for biological analysis like dna sequences or protein sequences so we will see uh, trying to get sequential patterns out of those very big very vast applications could be very useful and important actually we can distinguish transactional databases uh, usually which is uh, usually which may not be important to look their time effect however sequences uh, uh, sequence databases they have time time stamp attached with it and time series databases usually the time the things happen happened along the even or equivalent time intervals sometimes it's very consecutive so then from and then for sequential patterns uh, actually there are two kinds one is gapped and another one is ungapped patterns or sequential patterns in the gapped patterns gap gap patterns means 
you do allow to have gaps within those patterns on the other hand in non gapped patterns means you not you will not allowed these patterns these sequences means uh, everything is important the consecutiveness is important so if you have gap you have to treat them very seriously so for example uh, in shopping uh, sequences in shopping sequences uh, or shopping transactions probably you do not uh, care customers in the middle buying some other things uh, so it's not important to study the gaps for similarly for biological sequences in many cases you do care about gaps so the uh, like the protein sequences or dna sequences so if you insert too many things in the middle of two dna sets so it might be uh, sometimes you may completely change the function function of the dna sequence so let's look at the customers uh, shopping sequence which is uh, will consider as a major example to study to how to do sequential pattern mining sequential pattern mining essentially is uh, if you give a set of sequences the algorithm is trying to find the uh, a complete set of frequent subsequences uh, frequent subsequences uh, which uh, you know satisfying certain minimum support threshold or minimum confidence threshold so let's look at this example we have a sequence database containing four customer shopping sequences like uh, of sequence id of 10 20 30 and 40 and each sequence id contains a sequence like sequence id 10 contains a a b c a c d and c f as a sequence similarly other sequence ids contain different sequences in its uh, you know the uh, the sequence transaction uh, sequence database so let's look at this particular sequence the sequence in the sequence the parenthesis uh, means this one ef like this ef means uh, is with, within the same shopping basket then after that it get another one which is ab that means this ab you know following ef but ab is getting together at the same time similarly this df getting together but following ab then c and then b okay that means each one of these you can think it's an element or it may contain a set of items or you call them events then this one event may follow another event so uh, the items within the event the order is not important because they are in the same shopping basket but for our convenience we can sort them alphabetically like this ef we can consider it fe it may makes no you know confusion but for our you know convenience we sort them alphabetically this is the same if we write it ba or ab similarly if we write this fd or df it's same sequence because it and these items or these events are within the same shopping basket these are within the same shopping basket but we cannot replace their or swap these two items because they are independent they are not within the same basket okay if this is Uh, in, in these two items are in this uh, in parenthesis then this uh, uh, these uh, their order can be swept because then they will be in the same you know trans, uh, shopping basket but in the current scenario these are in different shopping transactions
then what is subsequence actually a subsequence is actually a subs a subsequence is any substring within this one or uh, this may uh, original sequence you probably can see here the subsequence you may have a gap for example a you can have a, a you have bc actually uh, this bc comes uh, when you chop this a from the original sequence this a chop this a from the real sequence then you have bc actually uh, you chop this entire ac uh, this entire ac then you get d and then you get c uh, this c comes when you chop this f from this shopping basket so this this one is a subsequence of this longer sequence of this uh, you know of this longer sequence then sequential pattern mining the sequential pattern essentially is if you set a sport like a minimum sport of 2 that means at least this uh, you know the two sequences contain these subsequences you find those se subsequences uh, uh, as a sequential patterns for example if you uh, if we say like a b then c like if you want to find this subsequence either it is a, a sequential pattern or not according to this minimum support of 2 then look uh, at this sequence uh, database for this subsequence if this subsequence occurs minimum of for two times in the sequence database then it will be a you know sequential pattern otherwise it's a not sequential pattern L so let's look at this first sequence id 10 okay this subsequence occurs in sequence 10 so it occurs once similarly we have to check in sequence id 20 so a b uh, so it doesn't occur in sequence id 10 sorry 20 then we have to look look for SIID 30 so it's occur in this sequence similarly we have to check in sequence ID 30 so it's not in SID 40 so that's why uh, as you know this a B then C occurs in two sequences uh, as in our scenario the minimum support is 2 so this a B then C is a sequential pattern so sequential pattern mining sequential pattern mining algorithm is uh, you try to develop algorithms which are efficient scalable and these algorithms should find a complete set of frequent subsequences we call sequential patterns and also these sequential pattern mining algorithms should be able to incorporate various kinds of user specific or user defined constraints for sequential pattern mining actually the uh, a priori property the property we have used in frequent pattern mining still holds for example uh, if we say a subsequence s1 is infrequent if a subsequence s1 is infrequent then any of its super sequence cannot be frequent so that's almost the same idea as we have used in a priori while we had discussed frequent pattern mining so based on this idea we have actually uh, we actually can develop a lot of algorithms one we have vertical format based uh, mining called spade which was published by zaki at machine learning in 2000 and another one is we uh, that we are going to introduce is 
prefix pen uh, which was published in TKDE uh, TK workshop in 2004. Similarly, uh, the third one is called GSP which is Generalized Sequential Pattern which was published by Srikant and Agarwal at EDBT workshop in 1996. So, another uh, method that we are going to study is mining closed sequential patterns called close pen which was published by Ian et al. at SDM workshop in 2003. And finally, uh, we are going to discuss constraint based sequential pattern mining. So, first I am going to introduce you an algorithm called SPADE which is sequential pattern mining based on vertical data format. So you pretty still remember the vertical vertical data format, format based a frequent pattern mining algorithm called ECLAT that we had discussed in the extensions of a priori algorithm. S for the same set of authors, they actually developed an interesting algorithm uh, for sequential pattern mining. The idea is pretty simple. If you take this sequence, you do a little detailed study, you get a sequence ID, an element ID and a set of items. So what you can see is for the sequence ID 1, the element ID 1, as you can see, the sequence ID 1, let me, okay. For sequence ID 1, for element ID 1, uh, you find the item A. Similarly, for sequence ID 1, the element ID 2, you get the items A, B, C. Similarly, uh, for uh, sequence ID 1, the element ID 3, you get items uh, A and C and so on. Then we can transform this into a vertical format. That means we just look at it where the A occurs and where the B occurs. So, the A occurs, you probably can see uh, in sequence ID 1, in element ID 1, similarly A occurs in sequence ID 1 and element ID 2. So, we may write it here 2. Similarly, A occurs in sequence ID 1 and element ID 3. You can check it from here. Similarly, then A occurs in sequence ID 2 and element ID 1. So, as you can see here. Similarly, we have to write it for item, item B. As you can see, B occurs in sequence ID 1 and element ID 2. So, it occurs here. Similarly, you can check for this. Uh, B occurs in element sequence ID 4 and element ID 5. Then we can form, uh, we can combine them into frequent sequences like A then B or you know B then A. If you say A then B then you will be uh, requiring A in front of B or you can say A's element ID is in front of B's element ID. That means for the same sequence SID1 we have to check where the uh, we have to check the element IDs of E then we have to check the element IDs of B. Uh, you can see from this from se for sequence ID 1, the element ID of A is 1 and the element ID of B is 2. So, this comes. Similarly, for sequence ID 2, the element ID of A and element ID of B is 
uh, you know for sequence ID 2 element ID of A is 1 and element ID of B is 3 so we can write this so similarly for sequence ID 3 we have to check the element IDs of A and B so for sequence ID 3 the element ID of A is 2 and elim uh, element ID of B against you know sequence ID 3 is 5 so this comes similarly we can check for B A for B A we have tried first we have tried the element IDs of B then we have tried the element IDs of A so for the same sequence ID 1 we have to check the element IDs of B then A so element ID of B is 2 so this this thing then the element ID of A so which is 3 so this okay you can write uh, 1 you can write 2 so this also but this is a possibility okay so same this way we can generate this and the possible sequence IDs and element ID IDs for A, B and B, A and other frequent items so for the length 3 uh, what you need is you just get length 2 frequent ones and then you do join how do you do join you probably can see these sequence ID should be the same like uh, for if we check for B as you can see we have to generate the a b a subsequence or sequential pattern for this we have to you know look at this frequent two subsequences so if we uh, look at this this element id and this element id should be same so we have to join them so we should write them only once as if we write a b a for sequence id one so we first write one for as a element ID of A then we have tried the element ID of B which is 2 in both cases so we write this 2 then we write element ID of A again from the second sequence B A similarly for sequence ID 2 we write 1 sorry write it 1 then these 3 are same so we only write it once and then element ID of A again so this thing so uh, to that extent you actually can find all of them so that's the reason you can use a priori based principle to find all the frequent subsequences this algorithm was developed by Zaki in 2001 called SPADE which is a sequential pattern discovery using equivalent class we have discussed uh, vertical format based sequential pattern mining so now we come down to see pattern growth based algorithm which is called prefix span Prefect, uh, prefix span is a growth based mining algorithm to examine the uh, sequential pattern mining uh, sequential pattern in more detail we need to introduce the concept of prefix and suffix prefix actually means anything in the front uh, if it is frequent uh, it, it, it is frequent you want to capture them as a frequent prefix like a a a or a b these are frequent or uh, and these are prefixes so then their projection the projection of these prefixes is becomes the suffix remember if you get a a when you see uh, is you g uh, got a position holder for the next one which is B so the position holder is represented by underscore 
okay the similar thing you get a b as you can see here a b the position holder or we shift to c it is the position holder for a b and we shift the c in the sequence so that means given a sequence you will find a set of prefixes and a set of suffixes which are the projection of the prefixes or you can say prefix space pro projection uh, then uh, for this projection what we will find is first find length one sequential patterns length these are frequent patterns uh, sequential patterns of length one then we can do divide and conquer method that means we divide the search space to mine each projected database we have a projected database b projected database f projected database and so on this mining methodology called prefix span or prefix projected sequential pattern mining so let's examine a little detail for this sequence database if we find length one sequential pattern as you can see here these are length one sequential patterns how it comes as if you look at this a aluminum spot was two so this a oh, sorry this a comes here 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 and in all the sequences so this is uh, this is a sequential pattern as you know this occurs four times in four sequences and its frequency count is four similarly we have to check for b so b comes in this sequence in this sequence in this as well and this so it occurs in all the sequences similarly for c let's check for g why g is not in the length one sequential pattern as you can see it is written here in the sequence id 4 40 so if you ch if we if you check it in sequence id 10 g is not present if we check it in sequence id 20 it's also not there similarly it's also not in sequence id 30 it's only appears in sequence id 40 so its spot count is 1 that's why we didn't write in sequential patterns of length 1 so these are the uh, sequential patterns of length 1 like this we can uh, actually get the length 2 sequential pattern by first doing project database or projected database then find uh, length 2 sequential pattern that means if they are frequent in this projected database they will form length 2 sequential patterns and then we can do uh, can do length 2 sequential pattern uh, based projection find a a and a f a a and a f projected database then we can we can keep this uh, this one ongoing okay the major uh, strengths or advantages of prefix span is there is uh, no candidate subsequences to be generated and the projected database keeps shrinking uh, as we goes on the next iterations so as a summary of this lecture in this lecture we have introduced uh, sequential pattern mining and discussed some basic concepts of the sequential patterns and we also discussed some algorithms used for mining sequential patterns in which we'll dis we had discussed about uh, spade and prefix as you know spade is a vertical format based uh, sequential pattern mining on the other hand prefix span is a pattern growth method so at the end i have finalized some recommended readings for this lecture the interested readers may read these articles for more details so that's it for today's lecture if you have any queries or questions 
you are welcome to ask uh, you are welcome to write in comments i will answer your queries and questions thank you